What's up guys? Learning with Rich here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a zone color scheme. Again, this exercise, you can do this on your own actual project. So you can feel free to try this with your own project or if you'd like to avail the exercise files that I'm using right now to support me so you can check the video description. So I've included a link there to avail the files. Okay, so in this exercise, I'm going to assign a color scheme to a zone in the building. So when you say color scheme, a color scheme allows you to communicate and identify parameters visually and spatially rather than by using space schedules or accessing element properties. Okay. So how to start creating your zone color scheme. So make sure, of course, you need to have a zone, spaces, zones in your project. And then after that, you can create now your color scheme. Okay. <clears throat> so to do that, you can go to annotate tab. And then after that, look for the color fill. And then that's what we needed. So we need to select color fill legend. So it places a legend in a view to indicate the meanings of color fills for rooms or areas. So let's click this one. And then I'm just going to place it here just beside. There you go. So on our choose space type and color scheme. So the space type here, the default is spaces. So I'm not going to use that. I'm going to select here HVAC zones. So just click that one. And then color scheme is cooling by load zone so that's fine so i'll just select here okay and there you go so i'm just going to click outside so as you can see here you will notice that the cooling load is based on tonnage value in one ton increments so you want a scheme that allows for a greater tonnage range so you can modify this one so to modify your zone color scheme so you can select a different color scheme legend so to do that you just need to select your color scheme legend and then after that you can select edits edit scheme Okay, and then after that, here on our schemes, so the category here is HVAC, uh, HVAC zones. So these are the options. Of course, you can create your own. And then after that, you can set the scheme definition. Now for this one, I'm going to select here, uh, instead of cooling load by zone, I'm going to select tonnage range. So as you can see, my tonnage range settings here, the scheme definition, the title is this one. Alright, so this is the <coughs> setting. Okay, of course you can always modify this. So this is by range. You can specify the color or if you want, you can change the fill pattern. So you can select other fill pattern if you want for this one, right? Okay, so after you select the scheme, you just need to select here, okay. And that's it. Okay, so that's how you modify your zone color scheme. Okay, you can also do this on your section view. So let's say I have here section 26. So I'll just double click that one. And then you can do the same procedure. Okay. So to do that, so let's just go back again to annotate, color fill, color fill legend, and then just place it just beside. Okay, and then after that, space type. So I'll just change that to HVAC zones. And then I'll use cooling load by zone. And then just select okay. So that's it. Okay. So that's it for creating a zone color scheme. So in this exercise, you applied a color scheme to the zones in our building. Okay, in our building. So in our next exercise, I'm going to show you how to create a schedule that you use as a design for a supply air system. Okay, so I have that exercise file, which is this one, creating an airflow schedule. 
So in this exercise, we're going to create a schedule for the supply air system project. So instead of placing this schedule on a sheets as a construction document, so we are going to use this schedule as a design tool to determine whether the correct amount of airflow is being supplied to each of the rooms in the model. Okay, and then you then use the schedule to adjust the air terminal airflow properties to more closely meet the design requirements. Okay, so let us create the schedule. So to do that, so from the project browser, you can see here schedule quantities. So just right click that and then after that select new schedule quantities. Just click that one and then for the category, so let's look for the spaces click that and then you just need to specify the name here so let's say I call this space airflow is scheduled okay so it's scheduled building components the pace is new construction okay so I'll just select here okay oh hang on so the name you already sup or the name you supplied is already in use enter a unique name so I think I already done the exercise, so I'm just going to delete that. Where is it? Space airflow schedule. So I'll just right click this one and then I'll just delete. Okay, so I want to do it start from scratch to show you how. So let me right click again. Schedules, quantities, select schedule quantities. Look for spaces and then specify the name space airflow schedule okay and then i'll just select here okay all right so here on our schedule properties on our fields tab so we need to select the fields here that we would like to appear on our schedule okay so for the fields we're going to select let's say i want to see the level just double click that it will be added here if you mistakenly place a field to your scheduled field, you just need to double click again to remove. Okay, you can actually use this arrow here to place on scheduled fields or remove from the scheduled field or just double click. So double click and then I also want to include the number, name, <clears throat> and I want the calculated supply airflow and the actual supply airflow okay so as you can see the selected fields are now added to our scheduled fields now we are going to create <coughs> a calculated value so we're going to add a formula type of uh, field okay so to do that so i'm going to select here <coughs> add calculated parameters so just click that one and then we are going to specify here the name. So let's say I will call this airflow delta. Okay, and then that is a formula. Now for the discipline, so we will be selecting HVAC. And then for the type airflow, now we are going to create the formula. Very simple. So I'm going to select this ellipsis button. And then I'll select calculated supply airflow. Double click. And then I'm going to add a minus dash dash sign. So calculated supply minus and then I'll click again the ellipsis button. Okay, and then I want that actual supply airflow. So that's going to be the formula of our airflow delta. So calculated supply airflow minus actual supply airflow. So after that, just select OK. Okay, so there you go. So we now have all the scheduled uh, fields that we want. So now let's go to the sorting. So let's go to sorting. By the way, if you are going to select the OK here, so this is how it looks like. So let's select OK. So this is how it looks like. Okay, right? So I want to modify this one. Okay, so I want to modify. So to modify your schedule, so you just need to go to the properties again. And then you can see again here the tabs. So you have the fields, 
filter, sorting, format, appearance, embedded schedule options. So if you select the fields edit, so you will be going back again to the scheduled properties. So if you close that one, you can also go to sorting and grouping edit. So it's actually in the same window, right? So now I want to modify this schedule. So I want to sort it. So I'm going to select sorting and grouping. So let's select sort by level. And then I want that to be ascending. I want to put a header. And then I want to put here a blank line. Okay. That's it. So if I select here, okay. So let's see how it looks like. There you go. So you see there's a blank line and then there's the header. Okay. So, and it's sorted by level. Right. Now let us uh, modify our further modify our schedule so let's after sorting so let me go to format formatting so i select edit okay and then for the level i do not want to show the level so i'm going to select level and then i'm going to select here hidden field okay hidden field so how it will going to be look like so if i'm going to select here, okay so as you can see level now is hidden but it's still actually being used so we already have the the heading here the header so i don't want to show the rest of the the level right okay so there's already the level so that's why i, I just hide the level field okay so let us go back again to formatting okay so level okay so that is hidden field so now for our formula for our airflow delta so i'm going to select this and then i'm going to select here conditional formatting okay so conditional format okay so we're going to format the airflow delta field to display as red when the difference between calculated and actual airflow is outside an acceptable range so we want that to be displayed as red okay so now for the condition so the field is airflow delta so for the test i'm going to select not between okay so not between uh minus 25 and 25 cfm okay so this is going to be the condition so airflow delta not between minus 25 and 25. Okay, so I want that to be colored red. Okay, so I'll just select that one and then I'll select here. Okay. Okay, so we just format our airflow delta field to display as red when the difference between the calculated and actual airflow is outside an acceptable range which is this range here so i'm going to select ok and after that i'm going to select ok again and this is now how it looks like right okay so as you can see the this the schedule displays red the rest of it is red okay because no air terminals have been placed in the model <clears throat> all the actual supply airflow values are zero and all airflow delta fields are red for occupiable spaces okay so that's why it becomes zeros okay so it's not within the acceptable range okay so we haven't specified yet the air terminal in our project okay so in later exercises you are going to use the airflow schedule when adding system components to satisfy the required airflow. Okay? So at least our space airflow schedule is working. So in this exercise, just a recap, we created an airflow schedule and defined the properties such that when the airflow delta is in an unacceptable un un range, the schedule gives a visual indication, which is red in our case, of the discrepancy. Okay, so this is the last exercise and it 
concludes the planning stage of the systems project. Okay, so in our next lesson, we are going to begin the designing phase by placing air terminals in our spaces. Okay, thank you for watching guys. Have a nice day.